Dumb Husky and His White Cat Shizun. Chapter 241 Mount Longxiu, The Truth The memory scroll lit up again. It was a rainy morning. Huizhui sat in the meditation room, holding the star and moon bodhi beads in his hand and muttering Buddhist scriptures. Suddenly, there was a flash of light at the door. He didn't look back. He just put down the yugu and sighed. You're awake. Mo Ran looked back and saw Chu Wanning standing outside the door. His handsome figure seemed to blend into the thin sky. Shizun, why did you save me? It is forbidden to shed blood in Wuabei Temple. Since you've proven yourself, I now understand your resolve. You can go down the mountain by yourself. You don't have to come back. Chu Wanning didn't take any luggage. He looked at the familiar figure amidst the Buddhist chanting and said after a while, She's on. She's on. Then what else can he say? Farewell. Just like that? Thank you for your kindness. The gauze on his chest was dotted with blood from his still bleeding wound. The knife was pulled out but his heart was still throbbing in pain. After nearly 15 years of trust, what he got was Weijui's I want your spiritual core. For 15 years, he had always thought that Weijui was benevolent and kind, caring for even plants and ants. He always thought that the world was as peaceful and stable as linen and the upper cultivation world. But it was not true. Huizhui lied to him. This tribulation was thousands of times more painful than having one's spiritual core shattered. Chu Wanning closed his eyes. In the end, he said to him, Goodbye. She's on. He had left his gentleness, trust, and innocence behind in this solemn temple. These were the things that Huizhui had once given him. Later on, they had all been taken away along with the broken spiritual core and the gushing blood. He turned and walked away. I knew he would hate me. Even if I went down the mountain with him, he would never be able to get over this hurdle in his heart. Huizhui said softly, so, I let him go. From then on, I left an unjust, selfish, and heartless image of me in his mind. He stopped acknowledging me and I didn't have the face to call myself his Shizun. At that time, it was not long after his birthday, he was 15 years old. 15 years of drifting duckweed fate, spring, summer, autumn, and winter, happiness, anger, sorrow, and joy. From that day on, I never looked back. Huizhui swept the steps in the courtyard. The leaves turned from green to yellow, and in the end, there was no longer a trace of life on the branches. Another year of winter snow fell. The monk was wrapped in a thick cassock and stood under the eaves. He narrowed his eyes and looked at the snow on the ground. His face looked young but his eyes revealed a sense of age. He was like all the ordinary people who were old in that he liked to stare blankly. When he sat somewhere too long, he would unconsciously fall into a light sleep. I'm already very old, about 200 years old. The things of my youth have slowly faded from my mind, but I remember more and more clearly the years when Chu Wanning was by my side. Sometimes I wonder if this is how an elder feel when they are worried about their children. But what kind of elder am I? I'm just a butcher without courage. Huizhui said, the yin energy in my body is getting thinner and thinner. I probably won't have any hope of achieving atonement in this life. I don't want to go anywhere else. I always meditate in Wuabei Temple and rarely come out. Only when the Haitang flowers were in bloom would I pick the most beautiful branch and bring it to the ghost realm. As usual, I would ask someone to pass it to Chu Sun. I've never been a broad-minded person, so the things I can do are pitifully few. If I do too much, I won't be able to do it well. When I encounter a choice, I could not be certain whether it's right or wrong. I plan to live like this for the rest of my life. Until one day, a person suddenly came to my courtyard. It was late at night when there was a hurried knock on the door. Huizhui got up to open the door and was stunned. It's you. Mo Ran followed behind and immediately saw the person's face. It was Chu Wanning. 
Chu Wanning looked very anxious and his face was pale. The strangest thing was that he was only wearing a thin summer shirt in the middle of winter. Mo Ran's first thought was that Chu Wanning probably gave his jacket to some destitute who was about to freeze to death. But then he realized that was not the case. Chu Wanning was dressed properly. He entered the bedroom with Hui Zhui's permission. His expression was like a cornered beast. Without saying anything, he handed an enchanted incense burner to Hui Zhui. Hui Zhui's words were stuck in his throat. In the end, he only asked, You. What's wrong? My spiritual energy won't last long. I can't explain each and everything to you one by one. Chu Wanning spoke very quickly, this incense burner is very important. I really don't know who to give it to. There are too many unknowns in this world. I don't know what he will become next and I don't know who will be lucky enough to protect the secret. So, I can only come and disturb you. What are you talking about? Are you not well? Hui Zhui did not manage to react yet, but Mo Ran, who was standing next to him, felt his head buzzing. His vision suddenly turned black. He suddenly realized that there was something wrong with this Chu Wanning. Ear piercing. This Chu Wanning had an ear piercing in his left ear. He was wearing a small scarlet earring, like a small cinnabar. It was a very small detail, but it made Mo Ran feel like he was struck by lightning. He could no longer speak. This was not Chu Wanning at all. Or to make it clear, this was not the Chu Wanning of this world at all. He. He came from his previous life, from the world of Taxi and Jun. Otherwise, he would not have this mark. Mo Ran clearly remembered that this earring was made from his own blood. It had an emotional curse attached to it, which made Chu Wanning more sensitive to his touch and love making. There was no mistake. He could even clearly remember how he had been filled with indecent thoughts when he created this earring. Then, when he had blown Chu Wanning's mind blank, he had passionately licked his left ear. While he felt the person beneath him shook with release, he had taken advantage of Chu Wanning's trembling to pierce his earlobe without any explanation. Chu Wanning was groaning. He frowned and grabbed the bedding, but he could not get rid of the man lying on top of him. Does it hurt? He licked the thin blood dripping from the tip of his ear. His eyes flashed with light. Is it painful or exciting? The piercing of the earring as it broke through the soft flesh was like another kind of conquest. It was always painful when a foreign object pierced the flesh, no matter what it was. Seeing Chu Wanning sobbing and shivering in pain, Mo Ran felt more and more excited. He rubbed Chu Wanning's chin, turned it over and kissed him passionately while panting. It's just an earring, why are you shivering? He asked while knowing the answer. He used force in his hand and violently pierced the earlobe with the needle. He showed no mercy, doing it fiercely and roughly. Look, it pierced through you. He stroked Chu Wanning's new earring and said hoarsely, it pierced in. It's in your flesh. From now on, you're mine. The Chu Wanning of his previous life had come to this world. This knowledge made Mo Ran's heart jump. His scalp was numb, his eyes were blurred and he felt that he could not breathe. He looked at everything in front of him numbly. What exactly was going on? He tried to concentrate and listen to the conversation between Chu Wanning and Master Hui Zhui, but this revelation was too great. He could not immediately return to his senses. He only vaguely understood what Chu Wanning was saying to Master Hui Zhui. From time to time, words like gate of life and death, destructive forbidden technique, and can't be stopped floated into his ears. He saw Master Hui Zhui suddenly sit down on the chair, his face was sallow as his eyes narrowed. How can you prove that what you said is true? I can't prove it. In the end, Mo Ran heard Chu Wanning say, I can only ask Shizun to believe me. This is ridiculous. You said that you came from another world through the gate of time and space, life, and death. In that world, there is a person called Ta. Ta. Taxi and Jun. There is a Taxi and Jun, 
who is destroying the world and almost overturning the whole world of cultivation. You found out his secret, so you tried to open the gate of time and space, life and death to come to this world? To rewrite everything? It's not to rewrite but to stop it? If this continues, they will sooner or later grasp the technique of the gate of time and space, life and death. When that time comes, it won't just be our world that will end. Chu Wanning paused, his eyes reflecting the hazy candle light. No one will be able to escape. That's ridiculous. Master Hui Zhui murmured, How is that possible? This is simply nonsense. Chu Wanning looked at the water hourglass in front of Hui Zhui's door from time to time. He was counting the time, and in his eyes, anxiety gradually gathered. Even if Shi Zun doesn't believe it now, he will understand later. Before that, please seal this incense burner in the cave of Mount Longxiu. I have set up the most crucial spell in the incense burner and let it slowly evaporate inside. The master doesn't need to care about it. The only thing to do is. Hui Zhui raised his head. He looked at Chu Wanning with an expression like he was looking at a madman. The only thing to do is to not let anyone near the cave of Mount Longxiu. Until the master believes what I say, then think of a way to bring the me of this world and that person called Mo Ran to Mount Longxiu together. The spell in the incense burner has already been set up, so there's no need to worry about the rest. Master Hui Zhui weakly moved his mouth, as if he wanted to say something. But at this time, a mournful whistle suddenly came from outside the window. The sound of this kind of whistle was exactly the same whistle sound during the disappearance of Taxi and June back in Mount Xiao. Chu Wanning heard this sound and his face grew paler. He stared into Hui Zhui's eyes, almost impatiently. I beg you, other than you, no one in this world can help me. There's no one else I can entrust this to. Hearing the word entrust, Master Hui Zhui suddenly froze. In his eyes, there seemed to be the turbidity and vicissitudes of an old man. In the end, he took the incense burner and slightly nodded his head. The whistle became even sharper. Chu Wanning turned his head to look at the night outside the window, and then said to Master Hui Zhui, Shizun, please guard the cave of Mount Longxiu well. Also, if Taxi and June appears in this world, or, as I said, if a heavenly rift with the ghost realm occurred, then the situation is bound to change. At that time, then Shizun would know that what I said today is not false. The whistle sounded mournful, almost tearing the eardrums. Chu Wanning turned and ran into the night. In the end, he only had time to look deeply at Hui Zhui. He originally wanted to perform a master disciple salute, but his hand stopped halfway. He closed his eyes, bowed deeply and bid farewell. In that instant, Hui Zhui suddenly stood up with courage from who knows where. He shouted at Chu Wanning, You, do you know what I did? Didn't the other me do the same thing to you? You shouldn't have trust me again. Chu Wanning only shook his head. His face was blurring in the night. She's on. His figure was getting farther and farther away. I don't have time. I beg you, think of a way. No matter what method you use, this issue is too important. Please persuade the me in this world to listen to you and let me come to Mount Longxiu with him. He finally disappeared. The curtain of night was dim and the stars were shining through the water. Hui Zhui chased out of the courtyard, only to see a flash of light far away that was heavier than the night. Chu Wanning had disappeared without a trace. Only the incense burner in his hand was still there full of spiritual energy. It was firmly held in his palm, proving that all this was not a dream. The scene in front of Mo Ran shook violently. Everything he saw before fell down like an avalanche. Broken bricks and tiles were everywhere. He said to use whatever method I can but how could I possibly pull it off? Hui Zhui sighed. He already doesn't trust me anymore and avoids me like the plague. What's more, I still have some reservations in my heart. I don't dare to believe whether the things he said were just conspiracy or not. 
Only when the heavenly rift happened in Kaidi town and when Wanning passed away, did I finally decide to write a letter to him after reviving him. I deliberated over that letter several times. Because I didn't know how powerful the person behind the scenes was, I didn't dare to state the truth in the letter. I also really didn't have any other excuse to look for him. What's more, his spiritual power is strong and he also holds the important position of Elder Yu Heng at Qi Sheng Peak. I couldn't force him to leave. Finally, it came to my mind that it might be very inconvenient for him since his spiritual core hadn't been completely restored these past few years. So, I used this as a reason to invite him to Mount Longxiu. But I had lied to him for 14 years. So, no matter how sincere my words currently were, he was still unwilling to believe me in the end. He heaved a long sigh, his voice almost frustrated. I've always been waiting. Just like nearly 20 years ago, when I detained him on the mountain, I came to him every day, hoping that he would change his mind. After I left that letter, I also went to Mount Longxiu every day to wait for him, hoping that he would come back. If only he could give me another chance, that would be great. The old monk's old voice was like a kite with a broken string, drifting far away. My days are really running out. I know that I can't wait for too long. So, in the end, I made this memory scroll. In it, I thought in every possible way, changed it several times and put in bits and pieces of memories that I didn't want to put in. But in the end, I'm a coward. I actually didn't want him to see the scroll while I was still alive. I couldn't stand his sad eyes. When he was 14 years old, I've seen enough of that kind of gaze. So, Wanning. He sighed softly, as if a heavy burden had been lifted. By the time you read this, I, should have already passed away. I'm still a very selfish person. In order to not see you hate me, I only dared to tell you the whole truth after I left, to that child you called Mo Ran. I'm sorry. That year, it was Shizun's fault. You're a living person. You've always been. Hui Zhui paused for a long time. Suddenly, his voice became hoarse. He said the last words he left in the world. Master Chu, can you forgive me? It was unknown whether the words Master Chu were meant for Chu Wanning a hundred years later or for Chu Sun a hundred years ago. After the voice faded, the wind suddenly blew. Countless memory fragments fell like snow, like floating cotton, brushing past one's face. The two hundred years of crime and punishment, the fourteen years of joy and sorrow, all intersected at this moment. The child was laughing. You against one, I against one. What blooming in the water? Lotus blooming in the water. The youth was arguing. If you don't know how to save others, how could you save yourself? For this cultivator, it's fine if I don't ascend. In the end, his phoenix eyes fell. Goodbye. She's on. All of this alternated with each other like a lantern. When the light was at its brightest, Hui Zhui's hunched back appeared in front of Mo Ran's eyes again. He leaned in front of the table and carved the last stroke for the sacred wood. The evening bell rang. I'll call you Chu Wanning. At the end of the voice, the flood surged. Mo Ran floated in this manic flow of memories. Then, he was suddenly pushed out of the memory scroll and fell on the sandstone ground in front of the cave of Mount Longxiu. The passage of time inside and outside the scroll was different. At this moment, it was dusk in the human world. The world was filled with a magnificent red glow as the sun set peacefully. Mo Ran lay down. It was as if he had returned to that night many years ago, when Master Hui Zhui dripped blood on the sacred wood. From then on, there was a child named Chu Wanning in the human world. He lay on the ground, his eyes out of focus. Shi Zun. Wanning. He finally understood why such a strong person like Chu Wanning would cry in his arms. He finally understood why he was crying so bitterly. He finally understood. It was just that the price he paid was too high. It was like being cut into a thousand pieces. 
was it all his fault? It was the fault of Taxi and Jun in his previous life. Chu Wanning had tried his best for two lifetimes to prevent him from causing chaos in the world. Chu Wanning's spiritual core had been dug out. His benefactor brother who saved his life in front of Wuyubei Temple. Not human, but the spirit of the sacred wood. Every blow was like a falling brick. Just one truth was enough to shatter a person's bones and make him a bloody mess, not to mention so many of them piled up together. For a moment, Mo Ran felt as if he was lying on the ground. All the bones in his body seemed to be shattered and that he couldn't move at all. Everything was in chaos. He looked around and saw Chu Wanning sitting on the side with his eyes closed. Suddenly, regret gathered into bones, love gathered into flesh and pain turned into blood. The desire to protect this person made him struggle out of the extreme drowsiness and confusion, and escape from the quagmire they made. He slowly stood up and walked in front of Chu Wanning. Chu Wanning opened his eyes and looked at him. Neither of them wanted to be the one to speak first. In the end, Mo Ran leaned over and hugged him. She's on, it doesn't matter if you're a sacred wood or a human, as long as you're still willing to have me. He held back, but still choked up. I will always. Always what? Stand by his side. He didn't deserve it. So, in the end, he said with low self-esteem and pain, I'll always stand in front of you. I can't accompany you for I'm not worthy of you. I'm so lowly and dirty, destroying heaven and earth, but you, you're pure. I have no right stand by your side, Wanning. So, let me stand in front of you and protect you from blood and sharp knives. Until the day I die. End chapter. Dumb Husky and his white cat she's on. Chapter 242. Mount Longxiu, Imperial Consort Chu. Chu Wanning didn't ask for confirmation about the revelations concerning Taxi and Jun, nor did he say anything else. In fact, the uneasy expression on Mo Ran's face was the best answer. He didn't need to ask anything else. Not to mention that he was extremely tired at the moment. A person's mind could only take so many hits before it became numb. After a long while, he broke free from Mo Ran's embrace and slowly got up. He didn't look at Mo Ran directly. He closed his eyes and then opened his mouth. His voice was terrifyingly calm. He said, I want to go to the cave. Since the other me had worked so hard to set up this thing up, I want to go and see what it was. If you learn the truth, will you hate me? It was almost a childish question, but Mo Ran still asked. After asking, he muttered. You will hate me. Chu Wanning's eyes moved slightly. He finally turned around and looked at him, Taxi and Jun. What have you done? He didn't ask Yusu you but used the name Taxi and Jun instead. Mo Ran felt a glimmer of hope because of this title, but this glimmer of hope was too faint. On one hand, he wanted to hold on to it but on the other hand, he was scared witless. Chu Wanning's lips moved slightly as his eyes narrowed. Did you kill people? Mo Ran didn't answer. Massacre a city. Mo Ran closed his eyes and continued to stay silent. Chu Wanning thought of the dreams he had before. Those dreams that he thought were ridiculous and ambiguous. He thought of the man from the Wushan Hall talking to him. He faintly understood the whole story, but when the words came to his mouth, he couldn't ask. In the end, he only said, What about me? What am I by his side? The jut on Mo Ran's throat rolled. He wanted to answer but he couldn't. Mo Ran had been running away for so long. He felt as if he was standing on the execution platform waiting for death, kneeling on the ground where he could see the executioner's shadow. When will his head fall? Where will his head fall? He suddenly did not want to wait any longer, nor did he want to run away anymore. The process of waiting for the blade to fall was too long. He would rather hit the wall and die, his blood splattering everywhere. Mo Ran opened his eyes and said, let's go into the cave. His fingertips twitched, 
as if he wanted to hold Chu Wanning's hand but in the end, he lowered his hand and only rubbed the corner of his clothes as he walked in front. Before stepping into the cave, he hesitated for a moment, then turned his head and grinned at Chu Wanning. She's on. Chu Wanning looked at him. That person suddenly smiled so brightly, so warmly. It was as if he wanted to squander all his hopes and happiness at this moment. He would never need them again for the rest of his life. Chu Wanning was suddenly jolted awake by the smile. He walked over, but he didn't know what to say. His heart was in a mess and so distracted that he unconsciously raised his cold hand and touched the other's equally cold face. Mo Ran stared blankly for a moment, then slowly widened his eyes. Chu Wanning closed his eyes and sighed. He pulled on Mo Ran, no longer hesitant to take the initiative to hold his hand. It was as if he was saying to Mo Ran, but also as if he was saying to himself, I saw you grow into what you are today. So, you, are not him. You are different from Taxi and June. Mo Ran's eyes were still curved. He froze for a long time then laughed, his throat choked. Yes. His eyes were wet. How could they not be the same? He was the vilest person in the world, a ghost who had escaped from his previous life. But to be able to receive such acknowledgement before everything ended, Mo Ran thought that the heavens really treated him well. No matter what Chu Wanning would do after he discovered the other Chu Wanning's memories, he would have no more regrets. He closed his eyes, holding Chu Wanning's hand. Taking a deep breath, he walked towards the cave of Mount Longxiu. After they stepped in, they could no longer see what's outside of the cave. The two of them looked around the cave and found that it was very narrow, about the same size as the disciples' bedrooms on the Shisheng Peak. In this empty cave, there was only a small table with a rusty incense burner on it. It was the same one that had appeared in Hui Zhui's memory scroll. The incense burner was emitting smoke. Mo Ran didn't like the smell of incense, but the smell in this burner wasn't pungent. It only had a faint smell of Haitang flowers from the West Prefecture. What kind of spell is this? Chu Wanning shook his head. His voice was low and slow. I don't know. This me is not the current me. Chances are he may have learned spells that I don't know anything about. Just like with you, Taxi and June never use willow vines as a weapon. His gaze turned to the incense burner. Maybe we need to touch it to activate the spell. After he finished speaking, he raised his hand and lightly touched the body of the incense burner with his fingertip, but there was still no movement. Ever since Mo Ran entered the cave, he had been looking at Chu Wanning tenderly and sorrowfully. Although he didn't want Chu Wanning to recover his memories, he still said, since this is an illusion that she's unleft for the two of us, maybe it's useless for just one of us to touch it. We need to tell it that the two of us are already here. All right. Let's try it. The two of them, one on the left and one on the right, touched their fingers on the intricate patterns of the incense burner. The scent of flowers in the cave suddenly became strong and the smoke rushed out like a wave, filling the entire cave in an instant. It was so dark that one couldn't see their own fingers. Moran didn't expect the change to happen so quickly. He was about to grab Chu Wanning's hand, but the rolling smoke immediately swallowed him. Mo Ran was shocked as he called out, she's on. But it was too late. There was some kind of spiritual power in the smoke. It was different from the power of a normal spiritual core, but it was unusually pure and powerful. He felt as if he was floating in the sky and then his limbs and bones were stiff, no longer under his control. Before even his voice left his body, he used all his strength to call out, she's on, how are you? But what came out of his mouth was only a vague sentence and then he couldn't move anymore. Chu Wanning's situation was actually not much different from his. He called out Mo Ran's name in the fog. At first, he heard some response, but soon it became dead silent. Mo Ran. Chu Wanning tried to wave off the smoke, reaching out for the edges of the cave but there seemed to be some kind of spell in the incense burner, 
making the space here infinitely large and he couldn't find the walls of the cave. Mo. Suddenly, his throat choked. Chu Wanning was like Mo Ran, shocked to find that he couldn't make a sound. And soon he found that it wasn't just his voice that was restricted, but also his movements he couldn't even control his own body. This feeling was like a dream. In the dream, he was still him, but he couldn't move or speak freely. He could only watch everything in front of him, unable to affect anything. His originally chaotic mind couldn't help but become more and more confused. If there was something to say, why didn't he just set up a memory scroll? Why did he have to go to this extent? After a long time, the smoke gradually dispersed. He opened his eyes and found that the scene in front of him was no longer that of the inside of the cave. Reflected in his eyes were the flickering red candles which light sway leisurely. He sat in front of a familiar yellow sandalwood table. The table was very clean and there weren't too many things on top of it. There was a deep mark on the table it was from when he had carelessly cut it with a saw when he was making a night wanderer. The cave had unexpectedly become the Red Lotus Pavilion. Chu Wanning sat stiffly. His body was still out of his control. It seemed that this was very much like the illusion of the Peach Blossom's spring. The only difference was that he couldn't control the development of things. He could only stay still and let some past events that had already happened act out in front of him. Why did he set up this kind of spell? What did he want him to see in this version of his life? Why did he wanted him to relieve it? Outside, it showed that it was late in the day. Two servants that he had never seen before were standing behind him, helping him comb his hair. He was being controlled by the illusion. He raised his hand and stopped their actions, saying, Don't comb my hair, I'll do it myself. As soon as he said this, there was a bang, sound and the door was suddenly violently pushed open. Chu Wanning could feel that he was very unwilling to see the person who pushed the door open, so he just sat in front of the table with his back ramrod straight. He didn't even turn his head and even closed his eyes. Both of you can leave. A familiar voice came from behind him. The two servants immediately put down the comb and basin in their hands. With respectful expressions, they lowered their heads and bowed. Yes, your majesty. The two servants left. Chu Wanning still didn't turn his head, nor did he open his eyes. However, he naturally knew who had come. How could he have misheard that voice? Chu Wanning had the alertness of a wild beast. He felt that person walking closer to him, one step, two steps. Suddenly, he breathed into his ear, carrying a strong scent of alcohol. It was boiling hot. Why haven't you slept yet? Mo Ran asked in a low voice behind him. Chu Wanning heard himself coldly reply, I was just about to sleep. Oh. This venerable one see. Mo Ran chuckled in his ear. You've already taken off your outer robe and removed your crown. Do you dislike this outfit that much? This venerable one ordered people to sew this outfit with the best golden silk and embedded with the best quality jade. The things this venerable one gave you are even better than the ones given to the empress. Why don't you like them? Never mind. Without waiting for Chu Wanning to speak, Mo Ran continued, in any case, you don't like anything this venerable one give you. You look down on this venerable one from the bottom of your heart. When he said this, he sneered, but so what? You see, you're still going to be this venerable one's property in the end. As Mo Ran spoke, he intimately reached out his hand and pulled Chu Wanning into his embrace from behind. Chu Wanning's body couldn't bear such stimulation and anger. He finally opened his eyes. Thus, he could continue to see everything in front of him clearly. In front of him was a bronze mirror. In the bronze mirror, he and Mo Ran's figures were reflected. Mo Ran was wearing a golden red robe and a beaded crown on his head. It was actually a wedding outfit. This man was hugging him from behind. His face leaned down and began to kiss his earlobes and neck. Chu Wanning trembled slightly. It was because of anger, but also because of something else. 
don't act foolishly. Ah, if this venerable one don't act foolishly, then what does Shizun wants me to do? Threats were useless and he was ridiculed instead. Chu Wanning could only grit his teeth and say fiercely, you're such a beast. Mo Ran laughed lightly. His expression was very infatuated. His handsome face had a half-sober and half-drunk lustful gaze. His lips constantly rubbed against Chu Wanning's face. He muttered, What beast? Look at you now. Aren't you completely, mine? Not knowing where the killing intent came from, Chu Wanning felt his body pick up something from the table. He turned around and fiercely stabbed at the back of Mo Ran's hand. Mo Ran felt pain and groaned. He took this opportunity to break free. He angrily glared at the man illuminated by the candle light. Get out. Chu Wanning who was within the body, saw clearly that what he had stabbed the other man with was a golden hairpin. It was a wedding accessory for a man. Tisk. Mo Ran raised his hand and looked at his bleeding wound. He first sneered, then stuck out his tongue. Like a poisonous snake, he licked the blood and rolled it into his mouth. His eyes flashed with a crazy light. That kind of light was full of animalistic intensity. For a moment, his face was no longer handsome. Instead, it looked a bit sinister. This venerable one didn't think that you could still hurt me when your spiritual core was already destroyed. Moran's lips were stained with blood. He laughed out loud, Chu Wanning, your claws are quite sharp. This venerable one really underestimated you. Get out. Get out. Is that the only thing you know how to say? Moran ignored his bleeding wound. It seemed he was not in a hurry to bandage it. He even seemed to enjoy this kind of pain. His expression was a bit perverted. You like to spurn this venerable one so much. Today, in front of all the guests, why didn't you say anything? This venerable one sealed your movements but not your voice. You could have yelled angrily and told this venerable one not to touch you. Moran walked towards him again. He stood a foot away and grabbed Chu Wanning's wrist that was holding the hairpin. The force was so strong that it was shocking. He grinned. There were still traces of blood between his teeth. All you did was wet half of this venerable one's sleeve with the washing water when the binding seal on your hands was undone. Mo Ran paused for a moment, then laughed out loud, Shizun, since you are so angry. Why didn't you shout at that time? You. Shameless. If this venerable one is shameless the who is a gentleman? Shui Meng? This venerable one did send him an invitation to today's banquet but he didn't want to come. If he came, what would you do? Mo Ran laughed lightly. Would you ask him to take you away during the ceremony? Although the Chu Wanning who was trapped in this restored scene was still confused, this body of his clearly understood Mo Ran's words. He was so angry that he gritted his teeth and didn't want to say anything more. Mo Ran looked at him angrily. He suddenly stuck out the tip of his blood-stained tongue and turned his face to the side. He lightly licked his ear. Chu Wanning, do you know when this venerable one needs to fuck you the most? It's when you look glare at this venerable one with such resentful and angry eyes. He pulled Chu Wanning's hand towards his crotch. If you don't believe it, then feel this. Isn't it very big and very hot? Shizun, Elder Yu Hung, Grand Master Chu. With each utterance of the respectful titles, moisture seep out at the tip of his member. Look, it wants you so much. Get out. This is the third time you've said this. When Mo Ran saw him like this, the malice in his eyes deepened. Today is a grand day for this venerable one. I've climbed up the peak and married a beautiful wife and concubine. This venerable one even left behind the empress to accompany you. Why are you still so fierce? He paused. Soaked in obvious malice, he finally squeezed out two words. Consort Chu. The Chu Wanning inside the body seemed to have been struck by lightning while the body of the Chu Wanning in the scene wasn't much better. He seemed to be disgusted by this title. His whole body couldn't stop trembling. However, 
Mo Ran was laughing loudly. His eyes sparkled. What's wrong? Are you so happy that you can't speak when this venerable one calls you like this? In any case, I've slept with you for so long. If you were a woman and I played with you endlessly every night, I'm afraid you would have gotten pregnant before marriage and given birth to my child. If this venerable one doesn't give you a status, how can I have the face to let you serve me in bed in the future? This venerable one isn't such an unreasonable person. Ha 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 ha. Chu Wanning was so angry that he couldn't utter a word. His vision turned black. How could this anger and disgust come from this body? The controlled body and the free spirit were both strongly disgusted. Chu Wanning was so disgusted that he almost vomited. He was also terrified and didn't dare to believe it. Taxi and June. The other Mo ran. What on earth have you done? He's insane. A madman. When Mo Ran had enough of laughing, he suddenly grabbed Chu Wanning's chin and fiercely kissed him. His mouth was full with iron taste of blood. He violently held Chu Wanning's wrists with one hand and pushed Chu Wanning to the side of the bed. Then, he leaned over. Chu Wanning closed his eyes and trembled. That hot and strong male body was like a mountain pressing down on him, firmly pressing down on him. Do your duty and serve the emperor. Mo Ran said, you and this venerable one are married now. You are mine. You can't escape. End chapter.